What's up, nerds? Happy Saturday. We're going to kick off the weekend with a little tutorial on how you can sum and count cells based on their background color. And once again, this is a question that I've been asked numerous times in the comments underneath my other videos. And there are a few different methods. I'm going to show you four of them, and I'm going to leave you to research the fifth. So if this sounds like something that you want to learn, then you know what to do. Keep watching. Now, counting or summing cells based on their background color, you would think that this would be an easy task to accomplish in Excel. But there is no formula available in Excel that will allow you to do this easily. Now, does that mean that we can't do it at all? No, it doesn't. We do have some other methods, some better than others, and most of these come with a whole heap of caveats. So I'm going to walk you through the different methods that I found in my research online, and I'll leave it up to you to decide which method you like the best. Now, we're going to start with the most simplest way of finding the count or the sum, and that is simply by using find. Now, if we look at our data set, you can see I have some student names here, and I have their pass mark for a test, so the score that they've achieved out of 100. And you can see that we have a background fill applied to each of these cells. Now, just a note here, we don't have conditional formatting at play. I've literally just gone in and I've changed the background fill of each of these cells using the fill palette at the top here. And I'm going to talk to you more about conditional formatting a bit later on. Now, what I'm aiming to find out here is I want to find the total number of good results, those that have a green background fill, the total number of neutral results, those that have a pink background fill, and the total number of bad results, those that have this orangey color background fill. So what I'm going to do here is let's go for the total good first of all. I'm going to select my range, control, shift, down arrow, and press control F to pop up that find window. So now what we can say here is where we have find what, we can actually search for things based on the background fill of the cell. So I'm going to go straight over to where we have format, and I can say choose format from cell. So if we select this option, my cursor changes to one of those little, what do you call them, pipettes. I think that's what we used to call them at school. And I can then go and select the background fill that I'm interested in counting. So if I want to count the total good, I want to select one of the green cells. So this cell just here. Now I'm going to make another quick change here. Where it says by rows, I'm going to change this to by columns. If I kept that on by rows, it's also going to pick up the green cell, cell B23, that says total good, because that has the same formatting. And I don't want to include that in my search results, so I'm just going to search in the column instead. Then when we click on find all, it's going to tell me in a little preview pane at the bottom where all of those cells are located, but check out just underneath, it says seven cells found. So effectively what we've done there is we've counted the number of cells with that background fill, which in this scenario is exactly what I want to do. Now, obviously, I'm sure you can tell what the drawbacks are of this method. It's not particularly automated, but it does give me my answer. So I have seven cells. I could close this down. I can come down here and I can type in seven. Now, this has no dynamic features to it. If things change above, it's not going to change the total. But if you just want a quick way of counting cells with a background fill, that is a perfectly valid method. And of course, we could use exactly the same method to complete the others, total neutral and total bad. So that is one method you could possibly use. Let's take a look at what other options we have. So I'm going to jump across to the next worksheet because the next way that we could do this is by using a combination of the subtotal function and filters. Once again, we have our students, we have their scores out of 100 and I want to find how many students need to retake their test. So all of the students who achieved a really bad score and have a background fill of this light orange color. Now we're going to construct our subtotal formula first of all. So we're going to type in equals subtotal and then check it out. We get a big long list of different functions that we can use with subtotal. So if I want to count, I can simply select count from this list. Remember, if you want to count a column that contains text, you would use count A. 
Now we're counting numbers, so count is fine. I can press tab key to accept it. And then the next argument is really just the array that we want to count the cells in. So I'm just going to select this. Remember, you could make all of this a bit more dynamic by putting your data sets in tables first. Let's close the bracket, hit enter, and currently it's giving me 16. And that is because I have 16 results in this array. And if you want to double check that, you can look down in the status bar and you can see here it says count 16. So we know that that formula is correct. What we can then do is combine it with filters. So let's go up to where we have our headers just here. I'm going to click on data and we're going to turn on filters. So now what I could do is where we have the score filter, I could click the drop down. I could say filter by color and I want to see everybody with a bad result and that is an orange background fill. So when I choose this, check out what happens. The list is filtered and the subtotal updates to three. If I were to click the drop down again and go to filter by color and choose pink instead, you can see that that works pretty well. So that is another way that you can count items using background fill. Let's take a look at another method, which is kind of similar, and that is using aggregate. So we're going to type in equals aggregate, and we get very similar arguments to the subtotal function. So once again, we're going to do a count, but this time we get a secondary list where we can choose things to ignore in our selected range. So I'm going to say ignore hidden rows. And then our final argument is the array, which is this array just here. Let's close the bracket, hit enter. Again, it's going to give me 16. But if we use filters on here, and let's choose green this time, it's going to perform a similar calculation, but we've set it to ignore hidden rows. So it's going to ignore anything that's in any of the filtered out rows. So that is another method that you could possibly use. And remember, with subtotal and aggregate, if you wanted to do a sum as opposed to a count, you simply need to select that option from that drop down list. Now, the next method that you could use is a very interesting one. And I have to say that I didn't come up with this. I actually read this on a blog post by Bill Jalen, which I think he posted quite a while ago now. I will link that down in the comments so you can go and have a read. I've kind of added to it slightly at the end, but I thought this was pretty cool. So I wanted to include it. Now, I'm just going to scroll up because I want to use this data set first of all. It's the same data set. We have our students and we have our scores because there is another way that we can do this and make it a little bit more automated. Now, there is a I want to say a function. It's not actually a function. It is a macro and it's called get dot cell. Now, get dot cell is an old macro function. I think that's what you would call it that was around in Excel years and years ago. And I think this stopped being a thing in Excel in around 1993. So Kurt Cobain was still alive the last time people were really using this in Excel. And what you'll notice is when I type in equals get dot cell into the cell, we don't get any function arguments. We don't get any help whatsoever. So it's not technically a function in Excel, but it does still work if you use it. Now, the first argument of get dot cell is basically where we tell it that we want to count background fill color. But there are lots of other arguments that go with this function. Now, I'm not going to list them all out here. If you do want to know what they all are, then you can just give this a Google and investigate a little bit further. All you need to know is that the number 63 is what counts background fill. The other thing to know about this is that because it isn't technically a function, we can't type it into a cell and have it work. However, we can set it up as a named range and use it in that way. So let me show you what we're going to do here. I'm going to click in the cell that is directly to the right of what we want to count. We're going to go to the formulas tab and into name manager, and we're going to create a new named range. Now you can give your named range whatever name you like. I'm going to call mine count by color, and then we're going to type our formula down here. Now our formula is get dot cell open bracket. And this is where we need that 63. That's what tells this little formula to count by cell color. We then need to select the first cell in the range. 
Now you need to do it this way. You need to select it from the worksheet, but then you need to go in and basically remove most of this. So all we need in here is the exclamation point, and then we want a relative cell reference. We don't want this to be absolute. So it needs to look like that. I will say, if you just type in exclamation point C6, it doesn't appear to work. So you do need to select it from the Excel worksheet. Let's close the bracket and click on OK. So now I have my named range, I can simply call it from here. There it is, count by color, hit enter. And then when I copy this down, what you'll see is that we get a number assigned to each of the background fill colors. So when it's pink, we get a number 38. When it's green, we get a number 35. And when it's this orange, we get a number 40. So now we can effectively use this information to count or to sum. So if we go down to where we have total good, let's count the green cells first of all. And we're going to do a simple count if. Our range is going to be this range just here. And our criteria is going to be our named range. Count by color. Close the bracket, hit enter, and you can see it returns the result of seven. And if we just visually check that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, working perfectly. Now, if you want to drag this formula down, you're going to need to lock your cell references if you don't have this in a table. So let's just quickly go up here, press F4 to lock that in place, and then we should be able to drag this formula down and get our results. So total neutral is also seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yes, and total bad is two. Yay, all working perfectly. However, there is a caveat just here. Caveat number one, this doesn't work if the numbers are conditionally formatted. It will only work if it's just got a background fill applied. And number two, it doesn't automatically update. So if I was to go in and let's say change one of these green cells to pink, so let's change it to pink, notice it doesn't change down here. However, we can get around this and get it to automatically update. Let's go back into our name manager because we're going to do a little bit of editing to our named range. Because on the end here, if we add in plus now plus zero and click on OK, it's going to change these numbers. They look a little bit weird, but in the real world, you would probably hide this column anyway. Let's change one of these green background fills to pink. Notice that it still hasn't updated, but if I was to click somewhere else in the spreadsheet, start to type something and then press enter, can you see now it updates? It would also update if we were on the formulas tab and we clicked on calculate now, which will recalculate all cells in the spreadsheet. So again, there is still a manual step in there of having to recalculate in order for it to update correctly. But we are getting closer to our goal of making this process really simple. What you could do is you could create a quick macro, which recalculates the spreadsheet and have that as a button at the top if people want to recalculate all of the formulas. So let's take a look at what that would look like as well. I'm going to go to the insert tab. We're going to click on illustrations and I'm going to select rounded rectangle. And I'm just going to draw a little, but this is going to be a button at the top here. Let's apply a little bit of formatting. So this looks a little bit nicer. Let's have this, should we have this in a light blue color? And I'm going to do shape outline. I'm going to say no outline. Let's just have it something like that. I'm going to double click and we're going to say that this has calculate now. And we want to make sure that this is all lined up correctly. So let's put that in the middle, make it a bit bigger and also change the text color so it stands out a little bit more. There we go. So we have our button. Let's create our macro. We're going to go to the developer tab. We're going to select record macro. I'm going to give my macro a name. We're just going to call it calculate now. I'm going to store it in this workbook. We could assign a shortcut key to it if we wanted to. I'm not going to. Let's click on OK. So now I'm in macro recording mode, I can simply go to the formulas tab and click the calculate now button. That is literally all I want this macro to do. So let's stop the macro. 
And now we can assign that macro to this button at the top. So if we right click and go into assign macro, there is my macro. Let's click on OK. Let's give it a test and see if it works. Now I'm going to change these top three. Let's change the color to this light orange color. So now I want this to recalculate. So keep your eye on total bad. It currently says two, but if we click calculate now, you can see everything updates. And whilst we've been focusing predominantly on counting, you can just simply modify this so that instead of doing a count if, you're doing a sum if instead, if you want to sum numbers as opposed to count. So those are some of the methods that you can use to count numbers based on the background fill color. I did mention at the beginning that there was a fifth option that you can use. And if you Google or jump onto YouTube and you're looking for information surrounding this topic, this is by far the video that you'll see most often. And that is using VBA to automate this process. And I will say that yes, VBA is probably the most flexible method out of all of them because it will do things that these methods don't do, such as be able to count cells that have conditional format supplied. Now I haven't included this method in my video today because I really wanted to show you some of the ways that you could possibly do this without using VBA. And there are so many videos available online already. They're very simple to find and you can copy and paste the code. But for those of you who just want some simple solutions and some alternatives, these are the best ones that I've found. As always, I would be super interested to hear what you think of some of these methods. So smash that like button, leave me a little comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff, and I will see you next time.